Robinhood has confirmed something big about its new wallets. Let's talk a bit more about it. Before we go any further, please keep in mind that we're giving away $500 to a random subscriber. All you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment on your favorite crypto. Read our description for more info about it. Now, let's get started with today's video. So, Robinhood has announced that it would begin testing crypto wallets in October. People may use these digital wallets to transfer, receive, and store bitcoins. In a blog, Robinhood wrote that the crypto wallets will allow you to move your cryptocurrency in and out of your app in a matter of taps, send your cryptocurrency to other wallet addresses, and receive compatible cryptocurrencies. This means you may combine your coins into a single account to make tracking your portfolio simpler, move supported currencies into your Robinhood account to trade them commission-free, and more. And this is exactly what Doge holders have been waiting for, that is, more control over the assets in their favorite exchange. And then there was Tyler Winklevoss, the co-founder and CEO of Gemini, who took to Twitter with the hashtag Dogecoin to the moon to show his optimism. Gemini already has Doge wallets available. A couple of months ago, Gemini said that Dogecoin is the currency of the people. It's natural, irreverent, and entertaining. Gemini now accepts Doge. Deposits are now being accepted. Trading will begin shortly. Basically, there are now a lot of exchanges that are supporting Doge, which is pretty great. Now, let's talk about the big news from today. Evergrande, China's real estate behemoth, breathed a sigh of relief yesterday when the People's Bank of China poured over $19 billion into it. They did it to bail out the debt-ridden real estate giant. If you don't know, the crash happened because of this crisis. Evergrande has over $300 billion in liabilities, making it the most leveraged real estate business, and many worry its demise may trigger a financial catastrophe similar to the one that occurred in 2008. So this could be considered a pretty good news for all the holders. Because of this, the top-tier cryptocurrencies, such as Cardano, Doge, and Ethereum, have retraced at an average of 13%, indicating robust growth. Talking about Ethereum, several research firms have suggested that one of the most significant support zones for Ethereum is $3,000. The major reason for this is the average market entry price, which remains about 3 k If Ethereum falls and stays below 3 k or hits 2.8 k a big number of traders will most certainly incur a loss and may begin closing their positions, which will put more selling pressure on the market. Now, it seems unlikely if Evergrande completely comes out of this mess. Moving on to Bitcoin, it's finally back above the 43k again. It's a key level to watch out for Bitcoin this month because it would match stock to flow's prediction for it. If it comes true, we could see Bitcoin rise to more than 100k by the end of September. So this price increase in Bitcoin was triggered by comments by United States Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, who stated that the central bank intends to maintain its current pace of monthly bond purchases for the foreseeable future. Powell also hinted that interest rates might rise as soon as 2022. So we could consider this as a big blow to the US economy, which would prove to be really bullish for Bitcoin. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin's options expiry, which a lot of people are scared about. On Friday, major crypto options exchanges, including Deribit, are expected to settle billions of dollars in Bitcoin options contracts. Data indicates a total of 73,700 options contracts worth $3.14 billion will be expiring on Friday, roughly 50,000 of which are call options and the rest are puts. Derivit will settle more than 85% of the entire open interest on its own. Still, analysts do not believe the monthly expiration will have a significant influence on Bitcoin, which is pretty great. Now, let's look at another interesting piece of data. According to this week's Arcane Research Analysis, Bitcoin appears to remain mainly dormant during Asian market hours. While some areas have experienced good returns, Asian market times have seen prices fall overall, with returns standing at minus 14%. It appears that European trading hours have been the greatest period to trade Bitcoin this year, with total gains of 294%. In June, the market session's returns reached a high of about 365%. Also, beginning in July, Bitcoin began to experience substantial activity during American trading hours, indicating that American traders are returning to the coin.
For the North American market session, cumulative returns since the beginning of January 2020 are currently at 87%. This suggests that traders in countries with the highest purchasing power are buying more than they're selling. Coming back to Ethereum, according to JP Morgan analysts, institutional demand for Ethereum is much healthier than Bitcoin. This is because, since August, the amount of Bitcoin futures contracts traded on CME has been steadily declining. Ethereum, on the other hand, has experienced a significant growth in open interest during the same time period. Now, this is still good for Doge because it shares a really good price correlation with both of them. Coming back to Bitcoin, in the previous five months, short-term holders have acquired 16.8% of Bitcoin supply, or around 3.16 million Bitcoins, and long-term holders currently control 79.5% of Bitcoin supply. So, long-term holders are individuals who have had their BTC for more than 155 days and acquired it before the mid-April historical high, whereas short-term holders purchased after the April 14 historical high. The average monthly transfer of Bitcoin from short-term to long-term holders is 421,000. This rate is likely to continue throughout the fourth quarter of the year when genuine scarcity may propel Bitcoin to new highs. And so it's another bullish sign that there we're seeing a rising number of long-term holders. Now, a really interesting prediction came for Bitcoin, based on Wyckoff distribution and Elliott Wave. Wyckoff is a trading pattern that emerges after a protracted rise, and the Elliott Wave is a technical technique used by traders to evaluate market cycles and predict possible price points based on factors such as investor emotion. Both of them are now in sync with one another. So, on the basis of them, Bitcoin's price movement might look like this. A local bottom between 37.5k and 40k, a high around 64k, and a dip back down to 52k before it begins its major climb. Coming back to institutional investing, something big happened today. Cambrian Asset Management plans to launch two trusts linked to Bitcoin and Ethereum next month. They're doing this to provide institutions exposure to crypto while also avoiding the wild volatility. And something like this is exactly what the institutions have been waiting for. So, Cambrian's flagship hedge fund, which uses leverage to trade 50 virtual assets, has returned 76% this year through August. And according to Cambrian President Tony Fenner laid out, this new crypto fund is for investors who want to have much more than simply a passive strategy, want to have an active approach, are aware of the risk, and are willing to pay higher fees. So, this will again prove to be really bullish for the entire market. Now, let's talk about some news for crypto adoption. When the NBA season begins next month, not one but two teams will be sporting crypto-related marketing patches. The Philadelphia 76ers announced on Wednesday that the Crypto.com logo will appear on all of the team's jerseys. The Sixers joined the Portland Trailblazers in a partnership with crypto e-commerce site StormX, which was announced earlier this year. And another news was that Coinbase intends to enter the derivatives industry. While the Bitcoin and altcoin markets have been somewhat correcting, Coinbase's move may have significant implications. It is expected to result in a new wave of adoption. Coinbase's derivatives division will bring more organic involvement from the United States, perhaps increasing the rate of adoption for these assets. While it may not bring in new customers organically, existing investors will be more motivated to maintain a watch on the market if their involvement with derivatives trading on the platform grows. Another significant benefit for Coinbase is its relationship with crypto institutional investors via Coinbase Pro. It is one of the few chosen platforms for institutions such as MicroStrategy and the addition of futures trading may cause these players to switch from CME to Coinbase. Still, there was some bad news from Coinbase as well. It recently canceled its crypto lending program. The decision to cancel the program, which would have provided a 4% annual percentage yield on Coinbase's dollar-pegged stablecoin, was driven by regulatory uncertainty. Basically, Coinbase did it after SEC threatened to take it to court last month. Its CEO said that he's not going to budge, so this comes as a surprise. Moving on, another bad news was that the Biden administration wants to propose Saul Amarova, a Cornell University professor, to be the next controller of the currency. This is bad because, in recent years, Amarova has questioned the present banking structure as well as cryptocurrencies. 
Amarova noted that fintech, including cryptos, is transforming how financial transactions and services are conducted in the United States, but she was skeptical that cryptos or fintech in general could revolutionize the supply of financial services. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Coming back to Dogecoin, AMC Entertainment CEO Adam Aaron said on Twitter that the movie theater chain is officially preparing to accept Dogecoin. He made the move following a Twitter poll in which he asked fans if AMC should add Doge to its list of supported cryptos. Aaron was blown away by the poll findings, calling it his highest ever read tweet by a long margin. So if we add this to the Robinhood news, things are looking really good for Dogecoin right now. And this is it for today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and sharing it with your friends. Also, please subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for daily videos on Dogecoin and cryptocurrency. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Goodbye, take care.